This video discusses the second part of the different kinds of obligation. Excerpts are taken from the Book of De Leon, The Law on Obligations and Contracts. This is C.E. Law's Contracts and Ethics. Let's start with Article 1184. The condition that some event happen at a determinate time shall extinguish the obligation as soon as the time expires or if it has become indubitable that the event will not take place. The fifth category for the different kinds of condition is mode. The above article refers to positive suspensive condition, which is described as the happening of an event at a determinate time. There are different cases for the extinguishment of the obligation under positive condition. The first case is as soon as the time expires without the event taking place. Let's take an example. Rob obliges himself to give Bert the sum of money if Bert will marry Charisse before Bert reaches the age of 23. Rob is liable if Bert marries Charisse before he reaches the age of 23. However, Rob is not liable if Bert marries Charisse at the age of 23 or after he reaches the age of 23. In this case, the time specified before reaching the age of 23 has expired within the condition, that is marrying Charisse, being fulfilled. The obligation is extinguished as soon as Bert becomes 23 years old. The second case for the extinguishment of the obligation under positive condition is as soon as it has become indubitable that the event will not take place, although the time specified has not expired. Taking the same example, if Brick dies at the age of 22 without having been married to Charisse, the obligation is extinguished because it has become indubitable that the condition will not take place. In this case, the obligation of Rob is deemed extinguished from the death of Bert, although the time specified, that is before reaching the age of 23, has not yet expired. Moving on to Article 1185, the condition that some event will not happen at a determinate time shall render the obligation effective from the moment the time indicated has elapsed, or if it has become evident that the event cannot occur. If no time has been fixed, the condition shall be deemed fulfilled at such time as may have probably been contemplated, bearing in mind the nature of the obligation. The above provision speaks of the second condition according to mode, which is the negative condition, described as an event will not happen at a determinate time. The obligation with a negative condition shall become effective and binding in two cases as well. First, from the moment the time indicated has elapsed without the event taking place. Having the same example, Rob binds himself to give Bert a sum of money if Bert is not yet married to Charisse on December 30th. Rob is not liable to Bert if Bert marries Charisse on December 30 or prior thereto. However, Rob is liable to Bert if on December 30, Bert is not married to Charisse, and if Bert marries Charisse after December 30. In the latter case, the condition of not marrying Charisse is fulfilled upon the expiration of the time indicated, which is December 30th. The second case is from the moment it has become evident that the event cannot occur, although the time indicated has not yet elapsed. Taking the same example, and suppose Charisse dies on November 20 without having been married to Bert. The obligation is rendered effective because it is certain that the condition not to marry Charisse will be fulfilled. In this case, the obligation becomes effective from the moment of Charisse's death on November 20th 
although the time indicated, that is December 30, has not yet elapsed. Article 1186. The condition shall be deemed fulfilled when the obliger voluntarily prevents its fulfillment. This article discusses constructive fulfillment of suspensive condition. The law does not require that the obliger acts with malice or fraud as long as his purpose is to prevent the fulfillment of the condition. He should not be allowed to profit from his own fault or bad faith. There are three requisites for the application of this article. The first one being the condition is suspensive. For example, an owner agreed to give a realty agent 5% commission if the latter could sell the former's land at a certain price. The agent found a buyer who definitely decided to buy the property upon the terms prescribed by the owner. To evade the payment of the commission agreed upon, the owner himself sold to the buyer the property at a lower price without the aid of the agent. In this case, it can be said that the due performance by the agent of his undertaking, the condition for the payment of the commission, was purposely prevented by the owner and is deemed fulfilled. Second requisite for the constructive fulfillment is the obligator actually prevents the fulfillment of the condition. In another example, the owner promised to sell his land to a buyer if the buyer would be able to secure a loan from a certain bank. Later on, the owner changed his mind about selling his land, so he induced the bank not to give the buyer a loan. Under the above article, the condition is deemed complied with the owner is liable to sell his land, so the owner should not be allowed to profit by his own fault or bad faith. The last requisite is if the obliger acts voluntarily. Suppose the inducement made by the owner was prompted by some other reason. Is there a constructive fulfillment? Yes. The law does not require that the owner act with malice or fraud as long as his purpose is to prevent the fulfillment of the condition. Article 1186 applies also to an obligation subject to a resolutory condition with respect to the debtor who is bound to return what he has received upon the fulfillment of a condition. For example, a male worker obliges himself to allow a female colleague to occupy the former's house in New York as long as he is assigned by their company in the province. When the female colleague learned that he would be transferred to New York, he was able to induce the president of the company to assign another person in place of him. The obligation of the male worker is extinguished because the fulfillment of the resolutory condition was voluntarily prevented by his female colleague. Hence, the female colleague must vacate the house. Article 1187. The effects of a conditional obligation to give, once a condition has been fulfilled, shall retroact to the day of the constitution of the obligation. Nevertheless, when the obligation imposes reciprocal prestations upon the parties, the fruits and interests during the pendency of the condition shall be deemed to have mutually compensated. If the obligation is unilateral, the debtor shall appropriate the fruits and interests received unless from the nature and circumstances of the obligation. It should be inferred that the intention of the person constituting the same was different. In obligations to do and not to do, the courts shall determine in each case the retroactive effect of the condition that has been complied with. This article discusses retroactive effects of fulfillment of suspensive condition. First, in obligations to give. An obligation to give subject to the suspensive condition becomes demandable only upon the fulfillment of the condition. However, once the condition is fulfilled, its effects shall retroact to the day when the obligation was constituted. Let's take this example. On January 20, Sean agreed to sell his parcel of land to Barry for an amount should Barry lose a case involving the recovery of another parcel of land. On April 10, Sean sold his land to Charlie. However, Barry lost the case on December 4. 
Before December 4, Barry had no right to demand the sale of the land by Sean. When the condition, however, was fulfilled on December 4, it is as if Barry was entitled to the land beginning January 20. Hence, as between Barry and Charlie, Barry will have a better right over the land. It is required, however, under the property registration decree that the promise of Sean be annotated on the back of the certificate of the title of the property to be binding against a third person like Charlie. Moreover, what are the retroactive effects as to fruits and interest in obligations to give? First, in reciprocal obligations. There is no retroactivity because the fruits and interest received during the pendency of the condition are deemed to have been mutually compensated. This rule is necessary for purposes of convenience since the parties would not have to render mutual accounting of what they have received. Fruits here may be natural, industrial, or civil fruits. In unilateral obligations, there is usually no retroactive effect because they are gratuitous. The debtor receives nothing from the creditor, thus fruits and interests belong to the debtor unless from the nature and other circumstances of the obligation it should be inferred that the intention of the person constituting the same was different. Article 1188 states, The creditor may, before the fulfillment of the condition, bring the appropriate actions for the preservation of his right. The debtor may recover what during the same time he has paid by mistake in case of a suspensive condition. The article discusses rights pending fulfillment of suspensive condition. First, rights of creditor he may take or bring appropriate actions for the preservation of his right as the debtor may render nugatory the obligation upon the happening of the condition thus he may go to court to prevent the alienation or concealment of the property the debtor was bound himself to deliver or to have his right annotated on the title to the property in the registry of deeds how about the rights of debtor he is entitled to recover what he has paid by mistake prior to the happening of the suspensive condition. This right is granted to the debtor because the creditor may or may not be able to fulfill the condition imposed and hence, it is not certain that the obligation will arise. 